Hello, this is going to be the first in a series of videos I'm going to do about reed maintenance and reed making. And I'm starting with the maintenance angle and I'm going to work my way backwards through the process, starting today with how to rescue an old or uh, worn out reed and working my way through the stages, latter stages of reed making and eventually to the earlier stages of reed making. So the idea of this is that you can follow through these steps and you'll gain skills in looking after your reeds that will be useful when it comes to making them. It's much uh, less disheartening than trying to do it the other way around, starting with a piece of cane and not necessarily ar arriving at something that makes a noise um, for your first several attempts at reed making. So today we're going to have a look at what you might do with a reed that either you've been playing on a lot and that is maybe on its last legs or that you've had in a box for years and you're not sure whether it works at all or it needs a bit of TLC before it can be got going again. And we're going to do this in two sections. So the first half is things that you will do before you get the reed wet and then the second half is things that you need to do after you've soaked it. So if you're getting a reed out of a box and it's not working, or a reed that you've been playing on that has stopped working, in which case you might want to let it dry out a bit, one of the first things to do is to have a look down the tube and to check that that is clear. Now this one I'm holding is actually pretty good, but I'm going to go through the motions just to show you. So sometimes what happens is that splinters of cane on the inside there will get bent down and start to actually block off that bottom tube and the air won't be going through your reed at all or will be very restricted by this and it really does clobber any chance that reed has of functioning properly. So if you do look down there and you see some of these you'll see them sort of pointing into the tube. What you can do is just to get something like for example a needle file if you've got one or even better this is a, a diamond reba, reamer sorry, from Riga um, and you can put that down there and just move it around and try and knock those out. The reason we're doing this while it's dry is those will be brittle at the moment so they will just snap off rather than bending and getting twisted up. So you would just literally insert whichever object you've got and rotate the reed and you'll see them fall out probably at the other end so they'll end up on the table. So that's the needle file version or the reamer will pretty much fill that socket at the base there and you can just rotate that slightly. Be careful not to do too much of that because it will make that socket bigger, that's what it's actually for. Next up, also before you go anywhere near any water, you want to make sure that the wires on the reed are sitting where they should be. So sometimes when the reed's very dry, these will actually fall down and they'll end up somewhere where they didn't originally sit. What I'm going to do today actually is to replace this top wire for you so you can see how to do that and I'm going to show you how to tighten it. So if, in fact let's start by loosening it, if when you get your reed out it's a bit loose, I've just loosened that one off, the odds are it might be sitting more like that. And you can see it's not in the right place because there are some actual indentations in the cane here where it was originally put on. You can see the lines where it originally used to sit. So if it's just like that, you can try to move it up until it's sitting in that place and then to tighten it. I'm putting this on a mandrel, that's this tool here, while I'm working on it. This is a really useful thing to have, but if you haven't got one you can actually use your staple instead. Just be a bit careful not to bend it or put too much pressure on it when you're doing this. So you're going to grab that to tighten this and you're going to pull away and then twist. And just take up any slack that way. Pull and twist and then bend that back down again. Now if that wire is old and brittle there's a possibility that it might break. So let's take this one off. This one's actually new because I've used it for this same demonstration a couple of times. If it does break you need to put a new one on. This is actually bassoon wire. Excuse me, put it away. There it is. Um, from the bassoon shop. Or for some of the smaller reeds I use uh, beading wire from the jewellery making suppliers which is a little bit thinner. It's made of brass, it's quite supple and it comes in different gauges.
Okay, so to put a new one on, I'm going to hold it behind the reed like that, so I'm supporting it with this left hand finger. I'm going to bend this around the front, then I'm going to take this one across the front, around the back, and across the front again. So what we've got is two complete uh, twists around the reed. I'm then going to take these two loose ends and I'm going to twist them together. I tend to do this in a clockwise direction so that my reeds do up like a screw would, clockwise to tighten, anti-clockwise to loosen. They're not always that way around. If you've got a reed made by someone else, it might go the other way. So you just need to have a look at it and figure out which way it's been made. So let's just get that sitting in those indentations. There we go, that's now sitting nicely. I'm going to trim the excess. I'll use my wire cutters for that. And just take up the rest of the slack. There, that's now nice and tight. We can pop that spare end down there. Brief word of warning, the end of that wire does tend to be quite sharp. So try not to um, do anything where it might end up inserting itself in your fingers. It's happened to me a fair few times. Okay, so we've had a look at the socket. We've had a look at the wires. Next thing to check is the binding. So it could be that this has also got loose. Underneath the Turk's head here, the crisscross bit of the binding, there is another wire. And if that's got loose, then sometimes that binding will actually move up and down. If that's the case, or if it started to fall apart, then super glue is your friend. This is in a little dispenser bo bottle, which makes life much easier. It would do. The bottle's not broken. That was in a little dispenser bottle. Will it work anyway? Yes. Okay, so when I squeeze on these black bits on the side, um, it comes out in a relatively controlled stream. So I literally put that around the bottom of that Turk's head, so it's landing both on the string and on the cane. Sorry, I'll get a bit closer to that camera for you. All the way around. And then while that's drying, what I would do is insert a plaque in the other end and put that in some kind of container like that to dry. So that's not touching the table, it's not going to glue itself to anything. Okay, next up, I'm going to do on a different reed actually, so that can dry over there. I'm going to have a look at the blades, and I've got an example here of a reed where the blades have actually cracked. So I've got a crack running down the blades here. And we're going to have a go at super gluing that as well. So I've just got another plaque. don't know if you can see, we've got quite a large crack in this reed running all the way down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some super glue in that crack and then I'm going to remove this fairly sharpish and then hopefully they will, those two sides will glue themselves up together. So let's give that a go. Plaque in there, a little bit of super glue. relatively quickly and I'm actually going to wipe the excess off. Normally I would use some paper or something, I haven't got that with me today so I've got a slightly super gluey finger and we'll just let that dry. If you do end up with excess glue on the outside then you can use your scraping knife to remove that and just bring it down again. It doesn't always work, you don't always end up with a playable reed this way, but you started with a reed that you would otherwise have to throw away. So you've got nothing to lose with this one, it's worth a try. Um, make sure you pull your plaque out relatively quickly. I have super glued one inside a reed before and had to uh, destroy the reed completely in order to remove it. That's not so good. Okay, those are our dry operations. Once you've done those, you can actually think about soaking your reed and cleaning it. So I'm going to take the reed that I was fiddling with the binding and wires of and I'm going to put it in some water. Now when you soak a reed you only really need to soak the blades. There's no need to soak the binding half 
the water will actually work its way up through there anyway while it's sitting there uh, but people who do soak the binding they they seem to find that these bindings fall apart more often I think than those who don't so if you can find a pot of some description that is about the right size and put the right amount of water in it so that the water comes up to the top of the blades without covering the bindings your reed might well last longer for it so when you're playing unfortunately for most of us uh, bits of skin and dirt do tend to end up both in and on your reed so one of the best things you can do to revive it is actually to try and remove those this is another job for our handy plaque I actually use this a bit like a scraping knife, but because it's plastic it's not going to take any cane off, it's just going to remove any gunk that might be sitting on the blades. So literally just along the blades on either side. And if it's dirty you'll find that you've got a gathering of gunk down that side there. You might want to do this near a sink so that you can then flush it straight away. So removing any dirt from the outside and then between the blades put it in and I'm going to push up ever so slightly so this bottom finger is pushing the plaque up onto the inside blade and just drag it out like that and see if anything comes out and the same on the other side. And then it's also worth again cleaning in the tube end um, and you can use a small brush for this. This one's called a teepee. It's actually intended to go between your teeth, although it's the biggest type that they make. You'd have to have pretty big gaps between your teeth to use this one. That can be used in that tube end to remove any dirt that's in there. I've also got a collection of teapot brushes here, which are useful for all sorts of things like tops of instruments and finger holes and so on. But the smallest of those will do the same job. That can go in there as well. And come out again if need be. So it's clean, all the wires are in the right place, you've definitely got room for airflow going through your reed. The last thing to think about is how open or closed it is. So we're talking now about the aperture between the blades at the tip and they will have a huge effect on um, how an instrument plays. So if a reed is very open it will be quite hard work to blow, the pitch will be quite flat, low, and the low notes will sound quite easily but the high notes might be very hard to get. If it is very closed then it will take a lot less air pressure to blow and the pitch will potentially be sharper and the bottom notes might squeak but the second register will come out more easily. If it's completely closed you won't be able to get any air through it at all so that's what I'm worth looking out for. But that usually only happens um, if things are extremely dry or if it's been played on a huge amount. Sometimes happens with the character reeds if you've not taken a look at them for a while. And the way that you adjust that tip opening is by squeezing the top wires. So if you've got a three wire reed like this one, you've got two wires you can see, and remember I said there's one in the Turk's head under the binding there, then you can use either of these top two wires to adjust that tip opening. If you've only got one wire up top here, so you've got two in total, then you've only got one set of choices. If you've got relatively strong fingers, um, or you only need to do a little bit, then this is a job you can do with your fingers. If you want to open the blade, then you squeeze on the size, sides of the top wire, like so. For me, I can just about do it if I use both hands. You can see that opening, and when I let go, it'll snap back a bit, but it will remain a little bit more open than it was before. To close it, rotate by 90 degrees and squeeze on the back and the front. If you need to do this a bit more strongly, um, or if you haven't got very strong fingers, then you can use your pliers. Just if you're using these, be gentle because it's quite easy to overdo it and to break it. So you would apply them to the sides to open it, or to the back and the front to close it. If you have got three wires, then you can use the second wire in the opposite way. So if you want to open it using the next wire down, you would go back and front, and that will then open the blades, or on the sides, to close them. And obviously if you do both, 
So if the aperture is actually kind of what you want, but you want a different effect, you could experiment with making the whole of this section rounder by opening it here and then moving down to the next wire and closing it there. Or you could try making it flatter by closing the aperture there and opening it on the next wire down. And that sometimes has effect on the sound quality or on certain notes that aren't behaving themselves. So that's worth playing around with as well. Um, and it's yeah, it's another thing you can do with a reed that's a little old and tired because you've got, again, very little to lose and much to gain in terms of knowledge. OK, that's it for today. Next time I'm going to be looking at how to adjust a new reed that you've just received if you think it's, it's a good one, but it just needs a little bit of uh, fine adjustment to make it work for you. See you then.